Hey guys, thank you so much for being here. Today we are gonna go behind my mirror loom here. I'm gonna show you a little bit about a tool that I recently got that is a new addition to this loom and it is all about the sectional warping process. Promises to make life so much easier with warping the loom. Hey guys, thank you so much for being here. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a space where we come every Friday and we talk a little bit about something to do with the fiber arts, either knitting or spinning or weaving or dyeing. Today we're gonna talk about weaving and the warping process. Now, if you are doing any weaving at all, you'll probably know that we wind warps using something like this, a warping board. This is a four and a half yard warping board from Schacht and you just basically take your yarn and you wind it all around these pegs to get the right length of yarn that you need to put onto the loom. And then there's a whole warping process to dress your loom, to put the yarn onto the loom and make that your warp. And so for a lot of people, they talk about how the warping process is actually really the slowest part of weaving. And it's the thing that, you know, prevents people from wanting to do very much weaving. It's just like, it's a bit of a hurdle. It's a bit of a hiccup, having to wind it on the warping board, dress the loom, do all that kind of stuff. One of the biggest challenges of getting a warp that's been wound on a warping board onto a loom is the beaming process. And so that is basically where you're taking the yarn you know, putting it onto the back beam here and then cranking the back beam to get that warp onto the back beam in a smooth, um, highly tensioned, very even, very consistent way. And it's a little bit tricky to do if you're just one person alone. So you might have seen from previous videos or anything like that where I can actually use my Louette Spring Loom at home and it's kind of a shallow loom. It doesn't have very much depth to it. And so I can use my knee to release the tension on the back beam and then use my right hand and crank the uh, back beam <laughs> to wind the warp onto the back beam. Now, this is, uh it's not particularly <laughs> attractive. It's like you're really contorting your body to get this thing to work, but this is how I warp a loom by myself. Now I've done other things in the past to try to make this process easier. You know, things like trying to set up a warping trapeze in my house and trying to hang a bar or trying to raise a bar so that I can take the warp and then drape it over the front of the bar and then tension the warp and then wind on the back. All of these kinds of tips and hacks and tricks are all things to try to make the warping process and the dressing the loom process a little bit easier for somebody who's doing it all by themselves. Now this entire warping process um, can be made easier through other technology, basically, other tools or other other additions to your loom. Now, my baby wolf, the Shacked baby wolf has this and I have used it in the past. I've assembled a uh, a uh, sectional warp beam onto the back of my baby wolf loom. There's a tension box, all of that kind of stuff. But I just recently all got it for this particular loom, for the mirror loom. So I'm gonna show you what this is all about and why sectional warping is um, hopefully going to make my life a whole lot easier. Okay, so you need a couple of things in order to do sectional warping. The first thing that you need is you need a back beam with sections in it. So these are sectional bars that have been attached to my back beam. It's just four of these wooden bars that I've screwed onto my back beam. And um, each of these bars has a series of metal U-shapes that are, are installed in here. So my metal uh, guides have been positioned one inch apart. Now you can get other kinds of sectional beams where they're two inches apart. In this case, I chose one that was one inch apart. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. I'll talk about the reason why I chose one inch sections. So this is basically, yeah, four of these uh, beams that have been attached to my back beam. You can see here, that's the crank. This is what I would basically wind on in order to put the, the warp onto the back beam. The next thing that you need is a tension box. And so this is a tension box. This one happens to be made by Leclerc. I have another tension box made by Schacht. They're different because they're designed to fit different looms. Um, but basically the idea is that you have a sort of a mini reed here. This reed uh, is open at the top so that you can put uh, yarns through the top. 
and then it's also got another open reed here at the other end. So these two reeds happen to be 12 ends per inch. You can get other sort of dented reeds. So I have another set that's 10 ends per inch and you just pop those in here and they help to separate all your warp threads. Then these bars here, these wooden sort of pegs here are adjustable. So you can sort of adjust them, slide them up, slide them down in order to create as much tension as you need on the yarn. And then the next thing that you need is you need something like this, something to hold yarn packages. So in this case, you can hopefully see that I have created four little yarn packages so far. This is totally not done yet. I'm in the middle of winding storage bobbins, but this is the basic idea, is that you have a yarn package for every single warp thread that is gonna be going onto your loom for each section. So if I have a one inch section and I want to make a warp that is 10 ends per inch, then I need to have 10 warp ends going through the tension box and then going onto the sectional beam for each of these one inch sections. And so I would theoretically have 10 packages of yarn, pull all 10 of these strands out and I would separate them through this back uh, reed and then I would apply tension on it. So just say if I did just say if I did this and then, and then putting tension on it like so. So you can see there's a bit of tension there. This is gonna go under the guide here. And then again, I would slay this little mini reed up front here. And then this yarn would go down. Just say it's going to go down like this. Okay, it would all be separated out nice and evenly. And then I would tie it onto the bottom here for each section and then crank the back beam as many times as I need in order to pull as much yardage as I need onto the back beam. So if I have a one inch section on my back beam and I need to make something that's 10 ends per inch, then I just need 10 yarn packages. If I was doing a two inch wide section, then I would need to have 20 yarn packages. And so the reason why I chose these one inch sections was so that I would have to make fewer yarn packages. So it's a little bit uh, lazy on that part of it, but at the same time, it means that every time I wind a section onto my back beam, I have to move and I have to basically unscrew this tension box and then slide it over one inch and then set it back up again and then wind another section. So there's sort of time savings <laughs> in different ways. Either you save time by not winding 20 yarn packages, or you save time by not having to shuffle this as many times as you want. So the next project that is actually going onto this mirror loom, I know that originally I said I was gonna put a waffle weave project on here, but uh, I have a more imminent project that I have to make, and that is a baby blanket because the baby uh, was supposed to arrive a few days ago. And so I have to make this baby blanket like right now. <laughs> so if I wanna make this baby blanket and I want it to be say 40 inches wide, that means I have to move this tension box 40 times for these one inch sections. If they were two inch sections, then I would only have to move it 20 times. So depends on where you wanna save time. So basically what I would do is I would take my yarn and basically tuck it in to this open slot on the comb and then have it over the yarn and then under the tensioning dowels here and then over again and then it would come out the front. So we'll try to make a straight line path and then have it come out the front under this bar here to have them all held together. And with the next one, next slot of that, Okay, and now because I'm actually trying to get to 14 ends per inch, I'm using a 10 dent comb here. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double up in one of, the, uh, one of the slots here. So I have two threads here, two together into one of these slots. Under here, 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 and out the front. So 
So the goal is I'm actually going to go and uh, we'll just close this up for now so that none of the yarn falls out. So when you pop that wire back into place, it's going to hold the yarn, prevent it from popping out of the comb. And again on this side. And that's genius. It's basically locked inside. It's not going to come out. And all of your threads are going to be coming off of this uh, bobbin rack here. And so all I need to do is, because I'm going to be winding 14 ends per inch, I need to make 14 of these storage bobbins. I only have four so far. And so I'm going to go wind the cones. So I am basically working with this yarn right now. This is the Gist Beam. It's a 3-2 cotton yarn, organic cotton, made in the States. It's grown in Texas, spun and dyed in North Carolina. And so this yarn is what I'm gonna be using for the baby blanket warp. It's all white, all undyed, and then I'm gonna cross it with a nice color. So I'm actually putting enough yarn onto this loom to make three baby blankets at the same time. And uh, <laughs> we're gonna see how that goes. It's six and a, 6.6 .6 yards, 6.7 yards is what I need to do. And so I've done calculations and I know how much I have to wind onto each one of these storage bobbins. So this is one of those styrene um, plastic storage bobbins from Leclerc. And so basically I'm gonna wind enough yarn onto here so that I can make another yarn package for the spool rack. Okay, so like with anything, there are gonna be some pros and cons to this entire warping process, pros and cons to all the different ways to warp. So when you're working with something like a warping board like this, this is very accessible. I can have this in and around my house. Like it's pretty portable. I can do it while I'm watching TV, really. I can do it and have it on the dining room table. Um, so it's easy to incorporate into your life, even though once you've made those warp chains, it can be a little bit slow to actually put onto the loom or wind onto the back beam. But if you're going to a sectional warping process like this, I sort of have to be positioned in this part of my uh, loom room. I have to be close to a uh, bobbin winding device. I have to be close to this spool rack. I have to be close to all of this stuff so that it's ready to go. The other thing that you need is you're going to need a lot of these storage bobbins. So unless you have like 14, I have to make 14 ends per inch. If I have 14 of these cones of yarn that are just like this, like those mini cones, that that can go directly onto this uh, spool rack. But that's actually a lot of yarn to buy. In this case, the gist yarn that I'm using, I can wind two bobbins, two of these storage bobbins from one cone. Um, so it's a little bit more efficient that way that I can wrap them all onto these storage bobbins. I do have to have at least 14 of these storage bobbins. The other thing is that there's a bit more waste involved. So obviously when I'm winding the yarn from the cone onto the storage bobbin, so it goes from the cone onto a storage bobbin like this, then I'm going to wind a little bit extra because I want to make sure that I don't run out of yarn when I'm winding my warp onto the loom. Um, and so I'm winding a little bit extra on here, but that means that when I do finally finish winding the warp onto the back beam, there's gonna be a little bit of leftover yarn on this storage bobbin. And likewise, once I've wound it from the cone to the storage bobbin, this is the leftover uh, yarn that's on the original cone. So there's a little bit of waste here as well because this is not enough yardage to put onto another storage bobbin. And I don't really wanna have like knots coming up through the warp. I want to keep it as knot free as possible. And so this is kind of just like a leftover bit of yarn. I could wind this into a warp on the warping board where I have a little bit more control over where those knots will appear. I can make sure that they're going to appear only at the end of my warp. So that's one way to manage that. But there's waste here and there's waste here. And the other big thing is that I'm only working with 14 ends per inch. Say you were doing 
something like you're weaving with really fine silk or something like that, and you want to weave that at 30 ends per inch or even 40 ends per inch. And uh, mine happens to be this one inch section, so you need 30 yarn packages or 40 yarn packages. But if you're using the two inch wide sections of your sectional beam, then you would need to have 60 individual yarn packages or 80 different yarn packages. And uh, that's more yarn winding than I want to do. So there's all these little trade-offs. Hopefully it can make a little bit of a faster, easier warping process for one person alone. But at the same time, it's more equipment. It's this tension box, it's the spool rack, it's the sectional pieces, and then all these storage bobbins. So there's a little bit of a juggling to see what works best. I think that with the amount of work that is required to set up all of these storage bobbins and to set up the spool rack, to set up the tension box, to set up all of this stuff, it makes sense for somebody who's going to be making very, very long warps. So in this case, I'm going to be winding 6.6, .6, almost seven yards of yarn onto the back beam here to weave on the loom. And I can't wind a seven yard warp on this warping board. This one is only four and a half yards. I could wind on the larger warping board, but again, that is more space for your arm to be moving back and forth. So again, just trade-offs with all the different kinds of processes. So I've been wanting to install this sectional beam for a while, but I didn't originally get it with the loom because I wanted a chance to just use the loom as is, and then gradually add on these bits and pieces to see if it could improve my warping process, to see if it could make my life easier without having to have a second person help with the warping, have one person hold onto the tension of the back beam, have somebody else hold onto the tension of the warp, like all of these things I can do away with if I use this technique of sectional warping. So I would love to hear from you if you have a sectional warp beam or if you would be interested in learning how to use a sectional warp beam. Um, I'm looking for tips, I'm looking for ideas, I'm looking for people who have done this many, many times. And uh, if you can give me any advice about how I should go about doing this, I would love to hear about it. Because anything that I can do to make the warping process easier, more accessible, faster, so that way we can get to the fun of actually weaving yarns together, that would be fantastic. So thank you so much for watching today. If if you like this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe. We come here every Friday and we talk about something to do with the fiber arts and color and craft and things that we love to do. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. All right. Bye for now.